The first coat is applying the paper joint tape with a base compound on all joints. There are several tools available for this application. The first we'll look at is the automatic taper. The automatic taper features a light aluminium tube which is filled with joint compound. Drive wheels in the head pull a piston inside the tube to force joint compound out onto the moving tape in a precisely metered amount. The central control tube by which the weight of the tube is carried is pushed forward to advance a starting tab of tape and pulled down to cut off the tape. On the lower end of the tube is a lever. It works the creaser wheel behind the taper head. This is used for taping corners and angles but can also be used like an extension of your hand. The automatic taper will simultaneously apply 25 to 30 meters of paper joint tape and base compound before requiring refilling with joint compound. When using chemical setting compound ensure the compound never sets in the taper. Using the taper is straightforward. To load the tape first remove the retainer wire. Place the roll of tape on the spindle. To prevent paper cuts load the tape so that it unwinds clockwise for right-handers, anti-clockwise for left-handers. Feed the paper tape through the tape guide into the head of the taper. The natural curl of the tape should be away from the tube. Once the tape is 20 millimeters past the feed needle, slide the control tube up to advance the tape. See how the tape curls around the tape wheels. To load the taper, attach the gooseneck to the loading pump and pump compound through until all air is expunged. When filling the taper, compound is prevented from moving forward past the tape wheels by a gate valve. To prepare the taper for filling, ensure that the piston is all the way to the top by checking the push rod. As the tape wheels are rotated, the piston will force the push rod up until it disengages the clutch. Move the gate valve lever fully forward. Place the taper onto the gooseneck and rotate back onto the rest. Place two fingers into the end of the tube to feel for the piston as the taper is filled. Do not overfill as it will create excess pressure in the tube that will be released when you open the gate valve. It should take eight to nine pumps. When full, remove the taper from the pump. Open the gate valve by pushing the lever down. Ensure the drive dog is engaged and wind to force joint compound out onto the tape. The taper is now ready for use. Hold the taper with one hand at the base to control the creaser wheel and the other on the control tube. When taping a horizontal joint, Start at a corner. Hold the taper with both wheels against the wall. Roll the taper, ensuring that the wheels are rotating and the tape is not being dragged. After approximately 300 millimeters, angle the taper slightly so that the lower edge of the tape is bedded into the wall and the maximum amount of compound is left behind the tape. To cut, stop the taper head approximately 100 millimeters from the end of the joint and pull down on the control tube. Once the tape is cut, roll out the cut-off tape. When taping ceilings, use the creaser wheel to help bed the tape onto the ceiling. After applying 300 millimeters, tilt the taper so only one serrated drive wheel presses firmly on the ceiling. To tape internal joints, both tape wheels must contact the wall. Start at the bottom with the taper parallel to the floor. Use the creaser wheel to fold the tape into the corner. Always ensure that the tape wheels are turning and not dragging along the wall. This can cause dry areas under the tape. Another tool available for this application is the Tape Pro Mud Box. The mud box has a lightweight body constructed from durable Lexan polycarbonate with stainless steel and aluminium components. Before use, check that the handle moves freely and controls the position of the creaser wheel and cutter and that the creaser wheel moves freely. To remove the lid, pull back on the handle, then raise the rear of the lid and slide forward. 
The lid contains a mud flow adjuster to allow for different compound consistencies. Try an initial setting of 2 to 3 mm when fitted. Slide the tape spindle out and fit to a roll of tape. Replace the spindle and feed the paper tape into the body, under the mud retainer and out over the tape wheels. Replace the lid, leaving the back half open to allow filling. You can fill the mud box by hand or using a loading pump. To start taping, pull back on the handle and position the mud box on the joint as you would an automatic taper. Use the same techniques ensuring that the tape wheels rotate and do not drag. To cut the tape, lift the tape wheels off the wall and allow the cutter blade to rotate and rest against the tape. Reapply pressure to the wall and roll the mud box forward, cutting the tape. For internal joints, start at the bottom with the mud box bisecting the angle between the walls. Start with a longer tab of tape to allow for some dragging. Ensure both tape wheels are in contact with the walls and allow the creaser wheel to force the tape into the corner. Cut off using the same method. For ceilings, use the creaser wheel to help bed in the tape. After applying 300 millimeters, tilt the mud box so only one serrated drive wheel presses firmly on the ceiling. This will allow easier, smoother flow of tape and compound onto the ceiling with greater accuracy to stay on the joint. The compound applicator tube consists of an aluminium tube, a sealed piston rod and a special cone-shaped nozzle to maximise ease of operation. Before use, check that it is free from any dry joint compound and check that the piston rod moves freely. It can be filled using its own suction, but ensure that no air is allowed to enter. Or you can use the loading pump and gooseneck to take advantage of the pump strainer. The compound applicator tube can be used for taping internals by using the angle head. The angle head fits onto the nozzle of the compound applicator tube, the ball socket allowing a range of movement. The tool applies two beads of joint compound into either vertical or horizontal internal angles. Ensure that the tube bisects the angle between the two surfaces. After creasing the paper joint tape, apply the tape by hand. All paper tape must be bedded in. For horizontals, start in the middle of the joint to avoid wrinkles, as the tape stretches slightly. For internals, use the Tape Pro Corner Roller. The corner roller beds the tape into the corner and forces out excess joint compound. Before use, check that the rollers spin freely and have some lateral movement. Check that no compound has built up behind the rollers. Place the roller into the middle of the corner and lightly run it up and down the joint a couple of times with little pressure to ensure alignment. Then apply more pressure, ensuring that the handle bisects the angle between the two walls. By lifting the tape and inspecting the joint, we can see that the compound has been forced into the angle. Next, we must glaze off the excess compound. Position the corner finisher at the top of the internal, ensuring that you are bisecting the angle. Run down the joint to remove excess compound, stopping approximately 300 millimeters from the bottom of the angle. Turn the corner finisher around and finish off the angle. 